Yes. <coughs> so uh, today uh, we learn about major fungal and fungal diseases of uh, cereals as well as the cash crops. So we know all about the importance of uh, plant pathology in agriculture. So we are protecting the plant means we are protecting the life, right? So if you has estimated that up to 40% of the food crops are lost due to the plant based and diseases annually. And in 2020, that United Nations has declared that uh, international year of plant health. Why? Because uh, <clears throat> to uh, raise the global awareness on how protecting the plant health can help uh, to end the hunger, to reduce the poverty, to protect the environment and to boost the economic development of the country, of the world. So uh, by keeping these things in mind, uh, plant pathology is always an important uh, wing of agriculture in Indian uh, agriculture. So uh, and, and this is, uh, there are a uh, number of diseases which are affecting different crops worldwide. So today we we'll learn about the diseases of, uh, we'll start with the diseases of rice. So this is the list of uh, diseases of rice, which uh, fungal diseases of rice, which, uh, which we know that uh, blast blast is caused by the uh, Magnapotha oryzae, brown spot is caused by Helminthus porium oryzae, bacterial blight, which is Xanthomonas oryzae, foot rot, bakane or fissurium blight, which is caused by fissurium moniliformi, stem rot, which is caused by sclerotium oryzae, Seed blight, which is caused by Rhizoctinia solani, Udabata disease, Epilis oryzae, pulse mud, Astelagenoidea virens, stack burn disease, Alternaria padwicki, burn or kernel smut or black smut, which is caused by Tilesia barclina, sheath rot, which is caused by Saracladium oryzae. Some diseases, some pathogens are there having the perfect stages in their life uh, cycle. Perfect stages are the stages where the uh, pathogen produces the sexual spores. So, in addition to these, uh, rice is infected by different viruses and phytoplasma also. So, you might have learned about these uh, viruses and phytoplasma from different speakers. So, uh, I will not <coughs> go in detail about this, but in I am enlisting these viruses. Uh, the rice tungro, rice tungro disease is caused by rice tungro bacilliform virus and rice tungro spherical viruses. So, these uh, two viruses are responsible for the rice tungro disease, which is transmitted by the green leaf hopper, which is uh, the species is Nephotetics virusens. So Nephotetics necropictus and Resilia dorsali. These are the species of the uh, green leaf hopper. For example, uh, second disease that grass stunt, grass stunt virus, rice grass stunt virus, which is uh, also transmitted by uh, brown plant hopper, which is uh, known as Nila Parvata lugens and other species of these. Similarly, the rice uh, ragged stunt virus is also uh, uh, important in the rice, uh, which is uh, transmitted by uh, brown plant pepper. Hoja blanca and orange leaf. These are orange leaf uh, is the phytoplasma diseases, which is called disease, which is caused by nephotetic syndicates. So we'll uh, see the first disease of rice that is uh, rice blast. Rice blast is one of the most destructive and serious disease of rice and occurring in more than 80, 80 rice growing countries. This is was first reported in China in 1637 and in India it was reported in Tanjore district of Tamil Nadu in 1918. So this disease has caused more uh, approximately 70 to 80 percent losses in the grain yield and incurred, uh, incurred due to this disease in India. These, uh, these are the symptoms uh, which you can see in the pictures. Uh, Spindle-shaped necrotic lesions with uh, grey-colored centers are appearing on the leaf surfaces, leaf blades, uh, leaf sheath, rashes. Outer layer of the uh, lesions become brown to dark brown in color. Pathogen also invades the nodal tissues, which becomes dark gray or sunken or black in color. So uh, the ca causal organism is the Magnapotha oryzae. The mycelium of this fungal pathogen is the septate, uninucleate, and branched. Uh, Conidia 4 is a high line, slightly colored, simple, septate, and conidia are the pear shaped. So uh, you can see the uh, shape of the conidia in the picture. If you see the life cycle and infection process of Magna Porta oryzae, uh, for example, uh, infected uh, crop is there, 
uh, there will be uh, two, uh, two types of uh, cycles sexual cycle and asexual cycle so asexual cycles is uh, started with the uh, um, attachment on the conidia conidia uh, starting uh, attachment of the conidia with the deep surfaces and it form it uh, germinate and they form the hooking structure which is called host, uh, prosorium and they get penetrated into the host and they uh, grow intercellularly intracellularly and produce the lesions on the leaf surfaces so and after uh, formation of the lesions we, we we visualize these lesions on the surfaces of the leaves so this one is the infection process uh, <clears throat> this one is the infection process after the germination uh, there are <clears throat> made, there will be a mating the, uh, and formation of the perithecium Perithecium is nothing but the flask shaped structure, which is having the different SI inside the perithecium, which is a floating structure. Uh, these SI, uh, these uh, SI uh, contains uh, different, uh, these SI, uh, there are, there will be a large number of SI present within the perithecium. And these uh, SI contains the ascospores. Uh, when there will be uh, optimum conditions for their uh, rupture of these uh, perithecium, uh, the spores or ascus will get uh, released from this uh, perithecium and different ascospores will be released from the uh, will be released uh, from the ascus and they will they germinate and they forms the hyphae and they forms the uh, then infection process again starts so this is the uh, life cycle of the in our infection process of the magna porta horizi as i discussed this is the all the steps as i discuss right now so we we'll go to the management so in order to manage the uh, magna porta grisea uh, or orizi the field sanitation is very much required the seed treatment with the uh, biologicals or pseudomonas is required seed treatment with the trichoderma at the rate of 5 to 10 gram per kg of seed is required uh, application of nitrogen fertilizers in three uh, split doses that is 50 percent at the basal dose and 25 percent in the tillering stage and 25 percent in the panicle initiation stage will reduce will reduce the um, incidence of the disease the foliar sprays with the uh, pseudomonas as well as uh, uh, at uh, 15 to 20 days uh, interval will help in the reduction of the disease and the, in in chemicals the hexaconazole isopropyl Prothiolon, casogamycin, hexaponazole, cyanide, these chemicals will help in the controlling the diseases. So, uh, use of resistant varieties are also recommended to manage the disease. The resistant varieties include the IR8, Jaya, IR36. So, second important disease that is brown spot, which is caused by Cochlebolus miabianus. So brown spot has been historically largely ignored as one of the most common and most damaging rice diseases uh, worldwide. The disease is, uh, was the causal agent of the infamous Bengal famine, which was caused in 1942-43. So <clears throat> the major symptoms of the disease includes the infected seedlings have small circular yellow brown or brown lesions that may girdle the polyoptile and dis uh, distort the primary and secondary leaves so starting at the uh, the infection starting at the tailoring stage lesions can be observed on the leaves they are initially very small circular or draw dark brown to purple brown they are fully developed lesions are circular to oval with a light brown to gray center you can see these symptoms in the picture so the, the the disease is associated with the physiological disorder which is called as akiwochi in japan so most of the time questions may be asked uh, that what is the akiwochi disease so uh, which is the physiological disorder which is associated with the disease so we can answer that uh, yes akiwochi is the uh, physiological disorder associated with the, the brown spot of paddy so and which is uh, uh, reported in uh, which is known in Japanese language. The brown spot is the seed borne disease and which is causing up to ninety percent yield loss. If we see the disease cycle and predisposing factors of the disease, uh, the fungus overwinters mainly in the infected plant parts. It is not the side borne pathogen. Uh, okay. 
so the disease the seeds may give rise to the seedling uh, seedling bite seedling um, bite is also uh, the, the disease is also known as a seedling bite the young seedlings the show the infection symptoms soon after the germination so few collateral hosts like uh, these these are the different collateral hosts which are reported uh, to on uh, this pathogen is uh, surviving on these collateral host so <clears throat> and they may serve as a source of primary infection Secondary infection is caused by the first form spores from seedling, which becomes wind borne. And uh, when the optimum temperature and uh, temperature and humidity uh, uh, conditions are there, so the germinate spores, uh, the conidia is germinating. The optimum temperature for the germination of the conidia will be 25 to 30 degrees Celsius, and humidity is more than 90 percent. The rice plants are more susceptible to the brown spot disease at the flowering stages. Flowering stage is the very delicate for the occurrence of the disease. As the disease is the seed bone, so we need to avoid the contaminated or infected shoe, uh, seed at the time of planting. Use of resistant varieties are promoted or encouraged. So use of fungicides like caprodion, propiconazole, ozoxystrobin, triproxystrobin, and carbidazim as a seed treatment can be used. Spray the seedlings with dithane and uh, Treat, we can treat the seeds with the hot water uh, at 54 degrees Celsius for 10 to 12 minutes before planting so to control the primary infection at the seedling stage. So that we call it as a seedling bright phase to increase the effectiveness of the treatment. We can pre soak the seeds in cold water for six to eight hours. So, next important uh, disease of uh, rice is the false mud, which is uh, caused by Astelia genoidea virens. You can see the symptoms of the false mud in the picture. So, by visual observation, we can see that the 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 seed, seeds of the rice are deformed, and uh, the structures are formed on the leaves, so, uh, on the seed uh, seeds. So, the symptoms appear on the ear, where the individual ores are transformed into the large velvety green masses of sclerotial bodies, of irregular to round or round to oval in shapes. So these are the uh, sclerotial bodies appearing on the uh, seeds, so kernel of the seeds. The infected grains become large, velvety green masses initially and appear as a orange yellow, uh, green, olive green and later which turn into the greenish black masses which covered with the membrane. So after the rupturing of the membrane, the color will be changing uh, in, in an interval of 8 to 10 days. So, so if the uh, that uh, membrane is ruptured, then color will be in orange or yellowish in color. And after that, it will be a dark green in color. Causal organism is a stelagenoidea virus. So if we talk about the disease uh, cycle, the fungus infects the young ovaries and transform the ovaries into the mass of uh, united, fine or colorless hyphae. The fungus exert the pressure on the blooms and causes them to burst and develop to form the spores. The conidia are born laterally on the minute sterigmata, which is developed on the fungal hypi. The uh, conidia germinate and form the pear shaped secondary conidia on branched and septate germ tube. The green spore balls develop into the four sclerotia. In the center, uh, you can see this uh, uh, all the structures inside the perithes. Okay, so this sclerotium. Okay. The sclerotia overwinters in the field and form stomata in the next season. And this stomata contains uh, contains the perithesia. Uh, perithesia is nothing but the flask shaped uh, uh, structure, which is containing more uh, large number of spore, uh, SI. And these SI containing the ascospores. After uh, condition, conditions uh, favors, these uh, perithesium get ruptured and all the SI get released from this uh, uh, perithesium and from each uh, SI and the uh, ascospores will be released by rupturing this sac the ascus this this one is the uh, this these this one is the perithesium these are the different SI so these are the different sac like structures are the SI or we can single uh, singularly we can call it as ascus this ascus contains the different spores. So these are the different spores within the ascus. These are the ascospores. Ascospores are the sexual spores which are responsible for the 
uh, infection process. So these are the ascospores, and after the rupturing of these SI, the ascospores will be millions of ascospores will be released from these uh, perithecium and cause the infection. Primary source of these are the primary source of infection. So as I discussed, this is the disease cycle of this uh, uh, pathogen, which is a soil and airborne. That, uh, the, for example, the infected host from the infected host, the conidia uh, and conidia host, conidias will be there. Conidia are the source of secondary infection. They get germination, germination, and they form the germ group, and they get infecting the host. So, so sometimes these uh, conidia overwinters on, on collateral host from the sclerotial bodies in the soil. As I told, that sclerotial bodies how they uh, develop into the perithecium and the ascospores, and these ascospores are the source of primary infection. So management of the false smell of rice uh, resistant varieties are recommended. Uh, for the management of the disease that IR22, IR26, IR28, Surya, Vijaya, IR30 and Sabarmati. These are the resistant varieties reported. These are the old one. We need to check the recent varieties if they are developed. So spray of copper oxychloride 0.25% is very effective, which uh, at the days of at 10 days interval when the crop is at the 60 to 65 days old. So it is controlling the disease. So these are the viral diseases. Just I will uh, show the symptoms of the viral diseases. You might have learned about these diseases from another speakers. So uh, rice tumor basically form virus is causing the rice tumor basically form and rice tumor spherical virus. These two viruses are causing the rice tumor diseases. So these are the symptoms of the rice tumor diseases, which uh, the plant is uh, having a stunted growth. The uh, yellowing of the leaves are occurring and uh, uh, there will be a no a panicle formation, there will be no air formation, and so there will be no productive yield from the infected plants. So these are the symptoms of the rice tumor disease. Second <coughs> viral disease that is a uh, grassy stun, which is uh, severely uh, the infected plants are showing the severe stunting of the plants and the grassy and bushy uh, growth of the plants is uh, uh, occurred in underfield conditions. And, uh, they generally the rice crash stunt virus offers uh, uh, in India is not that much widespread. So this is, can become a serious problem of limited rice growing areas when there is a plant uh, brown plant hopper uh, outbreak is there. So, <clears throat> so for management of these uh, viruses, we need to avoid the um, close planting and provide the uh, <coughs> spacing of 30 centimeter. So there are varieties which are released by IRI, so International Rice Research Institute, uh, Indian rice, uh, which contains the genes for uh, brown plant hopper resistance, that is IR26, 64, 36, 56, and 72. The plowing and harrowing the field to destroy the stubbles after the harvest in order to irrigate the other host. So these are the different chemicals which uh, may help in the reduction of the uh, vector population. I'll skip the viral part because it will take long time. So second important crop is the wheat crop. So, so this is the list of uh, diseases which are uh, affecting the yield of wheat. Uh, that is a uh, black rust, three major diseases, which is known as a uh, uh, black rust, brown rust, and yellow rust. Black rust is caused by Puccinia graminis, the species Triticae. Brown rust is caused by Puccinia recondita, and uh, the yellow rust or stipe rust is caused by Puccinia stipeformis. Blue smut is Astelia genoidea, Triticae. Rub spot or bunt or stinking smut, which is caused by Tilicia caris. Smooth spore bunt is called by Tilicia poetida. Kernel bunt is new Vesia indica. Foot rot pithium, powder mildew erisifi graminis. Lip blight, Alternaria triticina. Speckled lip lodge, that is Septoria triticae. Desclera lip spot, Desclera. Tundu or ear rot, that is Anguina triticae, which is caused by nematode. 
so this this is the list of uh, diseases fungal diseases of wheat so major in indian conditions major uh, diseases of wheat uh, includes the rust so minor diseases uh, among besides the fungal diseases there are minor diseases of wheat that is tecol disease which is uh, caused by menomyces graminis seedling blight that is uh, caused by rhizoctonia solani and fusarium are associated with the disease clerium rot that is clerium rolfsi leaf blight cladosporium cladosporium herbarum black chop that is xanthomonas it is a bacterial disease like typhora leaf spot that is typhora and molia disease molia disease is caused by the nematode that is heterodora heterodora penny some viruses are also known to infect the wheat wheat crop that is uh, soil borne wheat mosaic virus wheat yellow mosaic virus and wheat streak mosaic virus so we'll see the three important rusts of wheat so black or stem rust we know it is caused by paxinia graminis f species tdc the yellow or stipe rust which is caused by paxinia stipeformis brown or orange leaf or leaf rust which is caused by paxinia recondita you can see the symptoms of the black or stem rust which are showing the elongated narrow reddish pustules which are appearing on the leaf sheath leaf and stem that these are the having the uh, these are known as a tilio pustules which is having the uh, erudospores you can see in the first picture so this one is the symptoms these these are the symptoms of the black or stem rust of wheat second uh, important rust is the yellow rust so yellow lemon shaped pustules are arranged in a row on the leaves so these are the typical symptoms of the yellow rust so these symptoms uh, these pores or pustules appear in a row so this is the distinguishing feature of the feature of the yellow rust or stripe that's why the disease is known as stripes so these are the stripes are formed on the leaves so <clears throat> similarly these are nothing but the tilio pustules we are called as and these tilio pustules produces the erudospores second third important rust that is brown or orange leaf rust so there is an uneven uh, or there will be a no uh, lining or no any pattern of occurrence of the pustules on the leaves so irregular spores are uh, brown to or brown oval shaped spores pustules are appeared on the leaves and these are the scattered so and in this uh, brown or orange or leaf rust there will be no formation of tilio pustules so <clears throat> it is rarely happens now if you look at the history of the black stem rust of wheat that this disease has caused extensive damage uh, to the uh, uh, crop in uh, which is started way back in 1839 Uh, that uh, and subsequently later the rust epidemic occurred in India in 1946-47 in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and Uttar Pradesh, which damaged more than two million tons of grains, wheat grains. So, and later again uh, in 1957-56 to 57, it was very severe in West Bengal, Bihar, and eastern parts of Uttar Pradesh. So. reported loss of this disease is due to uh, due to this disease is 15% uh, it fair as it was reported more than 90% in european uh, countries and uh, us and australia so this disease is very much important as far as yield loss is is concerned so black rust occurs in almost all the states where the wheat is grown in north india it appears in the month of march in north india it is appearing in the month of february to march and <clears throat> since it is uh, since it is appearing late in the season uh, at the time the crop is almost at the stage of maturity and causing the least damage whereas in case uh, in southern india it is appearing in the month of november to december and uh, due to this uh, this is the early stage of the wheat crop in the southern india and which is causing the severe uh, losses to the wheat crop <clears throat> okay this uh, <clears throat> this is the disease cycle of the black uh, rust of wheat uh, so that uh, for example in infected wheat crop is there so infected as i said that 
Tilito spores will be there, uh, Tilito pustules will be there, and these pustules will produce the airborne iridospores. And these iridospores, uh, they are also um, they are producing that. There are two types of uh, spores will be formed on the wheat that is iridospores and Tilito spores. Iridospores is the uh, secondary source of infection, whereas the Tilito spores are the primary source of infection. Sometimes these Tilito spores uh, fail to penetrate in the wheat and they get overwinter. Uh, on the alternate host or on the grasses which are present on the buns so they get uh, and they get uh, germinate and these uh, erodospores again um, formed and they are transmitted uh, from grasses or alternate host by wind to the main crop and that's how the cycle uh, gets continued so in order to manage the black rust, you know, that eradication of alternate hosts uh, is required. But in Indian conditions, the alternate hosts uh, are not um, present and uh, which are only present in the hilly regions. So, <coughs> uh, in India, the cereal rusts are not dependent on the alternate hosts. So, <coughs> uh, and the uh, second important step is the field sanitation is very much required to reduce the primary source of to avoid the primary source of infection early sowing is required because uh, if the early sowing early or short duration varieties are there so there will be a no huge loss of uh, loss due to the disease in the wheat and the proper nutrient management because the nutrient application of the npk is directly uh, related with the uh, severity of the disease or uh, loss of the disease due to uh, the severe occurrence of the disease and uh, incidence of the disease so <laughs> we need to manage the crop with proper nutrient and proper irrigation so uh, proper irrigation is also required for uh, in order to because of the uh, higher humidity favors the disease development so we need to uh, devise the strategies for proper nutrient and irrigation so early varieties are recommended chemicals like uh, zyne 0.2 percent is recommended to spray uh, spray uh, against the lacus or 1.2 percent urea is required a systemic uh, that is plant of x is uh, yeah. again it's uh, effective so dusting with sulfur is recommended for management of the rest certain varieties which are having the resistant that can be So now we will go for the diseases of cotton. In quickly, we will complete the diseases of cotton. Uh, we will not go in detail. So just we can see the pictures. So this is the fissurium wilt. You can see the again, we uh, the fissurium wilt infected cotton is split into two parts. Uh, that uh, we can see the brown discoloration inside the uh, xylem portion. So this is the symptoms of the fissurium wilt in the cotton. So these are the symptoms which are appearing on the leaves. So leaves get uh, curled, leaves get necrosis on the border. So and in intervenal areas become yellow. These are the uh, symptoms of the fissurium wilt, which is caused by fissurium oxysporum of species basin. So second uh, uh, wilt that is verticillium wilt. Uh, that. Uh, in the difference between the fissurium wilt and the verticillium wilt is that in fissurium wilt you can see the brown discoloration whereas in uh, verticillium wilt there will be a no brown discoloration only white is uh, vascular discoloration will be there so this is the difference between the verticillium wilt and the intervenal areas uh, become yellow necrotized and uh, uh, the veins become yellow veins become uh, veins uh, remains green in color so and these are the uh, fungal spores of verticillium. You can see in the picture. Second, uh, third important uh, disease of cotton is the uh, Rhizoctonia solani, which is uh, causing the root rot. Is the very uh, at early stage of the crop growth, uh, it occurs and it uh, damages the uh, crop. It, uh, it will not allow the germination of the crop, uh, germination of the seeds, and uh, it is causing the uh, rotting in the roots. So, brown discoloration of the roots, it is uh, the symptoms of the rot. So, 
apart from the early stages, let, in later stages also, this uh, disease continues and it is causing the uh, rotting of the uh, roots. This is the mycelium of the rhizopenia, which is a separate branched, highly branched mycelium of the rhizopenia. So another important disease is uh, anthracnose disease of uh, cotton, which is caused by Colletrichum capsici. Uh, so these are the these are the different uh, symptoms of the uh, anthracnose disease in cotton. So all almost all the plant parts are affected uh, by these disease in cotton. So which is uh, deteriorating the quality of the uh, cotton and. Uh, heavy losses uh, will be incurred because the, these balls are infected heavily uh, due to the anthracnic disease of the cotton. These are the fungal spores, fungal structures of polytrichum. Uh, these are the conidia, these are the CT. Conidia are born on these conidia pores. These are the conidia pores, these are the conidia. So these are the CT, which are, which are the structure which is supporting the conidia pore. These are the conidia. Second, that gray gray mildew is uh, another uh, disease in cotton, which is uh, causing the white uh, powdery mass. It's appearing on the lower surface of the leaves, uh, uh, which is grayish in color. So uh, that's why the the mildew is called, called as a gray gray mildew. So on the lower surface, it is showing the powdery mass, and the, on the upper surface, it is uh, on the upper surface. These uh, uh, the symptoms are appearing uh, as a necrosis, necrotic spots, and after that, these necrotic spots coalesce and form uh, the entire necrosis of the leaves, and the leaves get dried. So leaf light uh, in cotton is caused by alternaria. So basic uh, important symptoms of the alternaria is the uh, conspicuous ring spots are appearing on the infected plant parts. That is uh, either it is ball, either it is uh, leaves, uh, either it is stem. So these uh, ring spots are, these ring spots are formed by the alternaria. So these are the conspicuous ring spots due to, caused due to alternaria macrospora. So these are the conidia of the alternaria so these are the septate conidia and these are the um, conidia pore which is a septate so this these are the uh, fashion of uh, conidia arrangement of the alternaria it is we call it as a maybe acropetal succession so acropetal succession means the older conidia is at the base and younger conidia as at the top it is called acropetal succession so here as there there will be two terms acropetal succession or basipetal succession so uh, basipetal succession so older uh, that younger at the um, base and older at the top so another important disease of cotton that is uh, bacterial blight i will just show the symptoms not i will not go in detail so <clears throat> otherwise uh, it will be a very uh, monotonous and may be boring for a few so you can read uh, i will suggest the books which you can refer and you can read in detail so bacterial blight is uh, one of the important disease of cotton which is caused by xanthomona sex on a produce path or malaria serum uh, these uh, bacterial blight are having four to five stages in their uh, different stages based on the symptoms and severity of the disease first one is the seedling blight it occurs generally at the early stages of the crop after the just after the emergence of the seedlings. So we uh, seedlings get died due to the this disease. And <clears throat> so uh, angular leaf spot, second uh, symptoms is the angular leaf spots. The, this is the, uh, these are the water soaked legions are formed on the, which these are, these are appearing on the lower surface of the leaves. So these, this uh, is the symptoms of the bacterial blight and bacterial blight of water. So these are the uh, spots which are of angular in nature, angular, and these are restricted in venlets. So, restricted in the venlets. So, this is the conspicuous symptoms of the that, uh, that angular leaf spot uh, stage. 
and this is these uh, spots are appearing on the upper surface of this type of up, on upper surface of the crown spots are appearing on the upper surface of the leaves so and third symptoms in the advanced stages of the crop uh, the disease that vein blight or vein necrosis uh, or we can uh, say that black vein so the veins veins become black and these spots are constrict uh, aligned to the veins so these blackening of the veins happens uh, in the third stage uh, that's why we are calling it as a vein blight symptoms and after these uh, these spots coalesce and to form uh, complete necrosis and uh, blackening of the leaves that uh, it is happening in the fourth stage that is we are calling it as a black arm so these are the different stages so these heavily infected uh, cotton crop due to the bacterial blight that is a square or bald rod phase at the maturity of the crop these uh, symptoms appear if we don't follow any control measures that the symptoms starts continuing till the uh, these uh, cotton balls so and they uh, the quality of the cotton is deteriorated and we do not get the desired results so the colony this this is the colony uh, characteristics of these uh, bacterial blight pathogen which is uh, showing white pollen white uh, conspicuous uh, mucoid colonies are appearing in the petri plate when, when we you know uh, isolate the cultures of the bacterial blight of cotton so this one is the bacterium with having the flagellum so the pathogen which is causing uh, bacterial blight in cotton and grape which are showing the white white uh, mucoid type of colonies whereas the other plant pathogenic bacteria they are causing the yellowish colonies so this is the difference between other xanthomonas and xanthomonas infecting the cotton or grapes so i'll skip the viral diseases because so lip curl disease which is you know that uh, you might have learned about it uh, lip curl diseases of cotton which is uh, caused by gemini virus or digoma virus transmitted by white flies so this is the structure of the viruses the, this, this is the geminate or twin shaped particles of the digoma virus that is uh, cotton uh, cotton lip curl virus the, uh, the three structures are uh, present in the uh, genome of the gemini virus that is dna a alpha satellite and beta satellite all these three um, particles are required to have a successful infection in the host so this you can see the, these are the white flies these are the vectors of the cotton leaf curl virus so these are the uh, white flies that is uh, white fly species that is bemisia tabasi is the known vector of the legume virus so these are the different favorable conditions which are required uh, which are required for the for the spread of the disease so i have just enlisted the diseases of chickpea so you can see uh, i will share this presentation you can read all the all the diseases so there are a uh, large number of diseases which are infecting chickpea chickpea is the one of the most susceptible crop and which is uh, affected by many fungal pathogens so one of the important pathogen is the ascorbite blight which is uh, causing huge losses to the chickpea wilt of course wilt is a, a serious problem now we'll uh, see the fungal diseases of sugarcane before going to see the fungal diseases of sugarcane we just have some background information on sugarcane as we all know that sugarcane is um, belonging to the uh, genus saccharia family poaceae sugarcane is cultivated in more than 80 sugar producing countries in the world india is the largest producer of sugarcane and largest second largest uh, in sugar now uh, first uh, uh, second largest in sugar production next to brazil there are several constraints in the sugarcane production 
in India that uh, includes the low pain productivity, low or stagnant sugar recovery, that is approximately 10%, high production cost and losses due to biotic and abiotic stresses. Besides these constraints, so uh, diseases also play an important role in reducing the production of the sugar cane. Uh, you can see that sugar cane is cultivated into different regions of India, that is subtropical region and tropical region. Subtropical, we know that states, you know, subtropical states that starting from Assam to uh, Assam, Bihar, Haryana, parts of Madhya Pradesh, Punjab, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, West Bengal, Jharkhand, and other India states. Whereas the tropical states includes the Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Karnataka, Kerala, part of Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Odisha, Tamil Nadu, Chhattisgarh, and Pondicherry. So the area under the subtropical condition is uh, 2.2 million hectare, whereas under tropical condition it is 2.8 million hectare. And uh, recovery is almost near about 10 in all the in both the regions. These are the different states which are which you working. The top 10 different states. Yes, sugarcane is known to infect by many uh, fungal diseases. Approximately 11 fungal diseases are known to infect uh, uh, affect the sugarcane. It has uh, four bacterial diseases, uh, near about eight viral diseases, two phytoplasma. There are more, and that is four to five phytoplasma are reported to infect the uh, reported to sugar infect sugarcane uh, nematodes. So. <clears throat> Among the uh, fungal diseases, red rot, smut, wilt, pineapple disease, and poca boeing, these are the major diseases of sugarcane. Whereas rust, brown spot, brown stripe, these are not occurring in almost in all the uh, states. Uh, it is these rust, brown spot, and brown stripe, these are occurring in the temperate or tropical conditions, so not under the subtropical conditions. So, uh, so it is infected by four bacterial diseases that is rotten stunting, gumming, lip scald, and red stack. These are the four bacterial diseases infecting sugarcane. Sugarcane is also infected by almost uh, four to five viruses. Under Indian conditions, sugarcane mosaic virus, sugar sorghum mosaic virus, sugarcane stick mosaic virus, sugarcane basiliform, and sugarcane yellow leaf virus. These are reported in India, whereas the maize dwarf mosaic virus Johnson grass mosaic virus, peanut clump virus, and G mosaic virus, they are not reported to infect uh, sugarcane in the Indian conditions. So, so we'll just go uh, one by one based on the symptoms. So, you can see the red rot. So, uh, <coughs> red rot is one of the major important disease of sugarcane in India, which is first reported in 1893, which is from Java. Uh, now, it is part of Indonesia. So a serious epidemic of the disease occurred in the past uh, in past in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. And due to these uh, epidemics, some of the very promising varieties became highly susceptible and they were withdrawn from cultivation. Characteristic symptoms uh, which shows that the um, leaves at the ground region, they shows the yellowing followed by drooping at the third and fourth leaves, which, which starts from the uh, drying starts on drooping starts from the margin. The entire crown becomes light or orange to yellow, and later on it dies. So you can split the infected red dot infected uh, cane. So you can see the alternate spots of the red and white uh, digits. Uh, you can see uh, these are nothing but due to the uh, infection of the red dot. The affected stalks exhibit the purplish discoloration and shrinking of the brain. <clears throat> uh, after splitting the infected canes, we can <clears throat> have the uh, that uh, smell of uh, vinegar that uh, tissue emits, infected tissue emits the smell of vinegar. Under severe condition, the set born infection or pathogen induces the set settling mortality. The midrib of the leaves is also affected by the fungus red patches with ash colored center which develops on the midrib of the infected leaves. Second important disease is uh, smut. A smut uh, is well known disease of sugarcane and reported from different countries. This disease is of uh, 
wild canes and uh, those varieties which are thin they are highly susceptible to the disease so on the affected plant produce the whip like uh, black shoot covered which is uh, with the uh, smut pores you can see this in the picture the, this is the uh, whip smut uh, which is the indicative uh, this is the indicative of the smut infection So these are the symptoms of the smut. Now another important disease is the wilt, <coughs> wilt of sugarcane, which is appears mainly during the monsoon and post uh, monsoon period. So the the leaves show the yellowing followed by drying uh, from the upward. So you can see the difference between the wilt and red dot of sugarcane. In case of wilt, the uh, cane become hollow hollow and the xylem, port, uh, xylem uh, portion becomes whitish in color and hollow. So in case of red rot, you cannot see the hollow. This will be intact, but only the reddening will be there. Reddish discoloration will be there in the stem, uh, in the cane. So this is the difference between the red rot infected cane and will the infected cane so and due to this uh, wilt infection the uh, plants collapsed and there will be a hundred percent uh, it loss will be there so in the wilt affected plants so uh, cetrot is uh, another uh, disease which uh, caused by ceratocystis paradoxa important soil and seed borne disease which affect the seed germination the disease is also known as pineapple disease because uh, when we split the infected canes, it uh, emits the odor of pine uh, like uh, pineapple fruits. So that's why the disease is known as a pineapple disease. Standing canes also affected depending on the environmental conditions. The root rot, which is caused by Pythium graminicolum, the affected seedlings are characterized by the yellowing or drying of the uh, leaves and uh, dark necrotic lesions on the affected roots. The affected seedlings subsequently die due to the rotting of roots. The death of seedlings also occurs. Uh, occasionally, the standing canes are also affected by the disease, resulting in the rotting of the roots, yellowing and drying of the clumps, especially under the waterlogged conditions. Oka boeing uh, is one of the important disease nowadays because it is uh, causing huge loss. Uh, it is causing huge losses under uh, uh, North Indian conditions. Uh, in this disease, there there will be um, three stages of um, three stages. That is chlorotic phase, acute phase, or uh, we call it as a top rot phase, and third is the knife cut phase stage. So knife cut is uh, uh, the uh, advanced stage of the disease and which is causing the severe damage to the crop. So the in the chlorotic phase, I can show the pictures. So this, uh, yes, this is the chlorotic stage of the crop, uh, stage of the disease, which is uh, causing the, uh, the chlorosis, uh, chlorosis of the leaves. This one is the top rot phase. So you can see in the picture that the top is almost rotted due to the fungal infection. And uh, this, uh, the growth of the cane becomes stunted and uh, there won't be a further uh, growth of the plants. And uh, due to this, uh, there will be uh, losses in the uh, heat, overall heat. Second uh, symptoms is the knife cut phase. So uh, you can see that uh, canes are uh, chopped like uh, chopped by knife. It seems that uh, it is chopped by knife. So this is the uh, adver uh, adverse uh, symptoms of the disease of the pop So now nowadays the most of the sugarcane varieties which are cultivated under uh, uh, North Indian conditions, uh, especially in UPBR. So these are uh, going uh, susceptible to, to the disease, and this is uh, spreading uh, on a large area. And so management practices are required and uh, research uh, on these uh, disease has started initiated on different institutes uh, in different institutes uh, for the management of the coca disease. 
so another uh, important uh, that trust which, which is uh, not uh, that much severe uh, under north indian conditions but it is a uh, severe under tropical conditions you can see that uh, symptoms of the rust pustules which are appearing on the leaf surfaces this uh, these are the symptoms which are on the lower surface of the leaves Another uh, important disease is the rattan stunting, which is caused by Leptospira zaili. The affected plants are usually stunted and have a poor root system. They show reduced tillering and shortening of the internodes. The diseased shoots on splitting show the orange-red discoloration of fibrovascular bundles at the maturity. The infected uh, canes uh, show the slow germination, delayed plant growth. Presence of uh, rattan stunting disease is reported in symptomless varieties. So. most of the time the symptoms are not visible so just uh, i have listed the important viruses of sugarcane sugarcane mosaic virus sorghum mosaic virus sugarcane stick mosaic virus so these are the sugarcane mosaic is the belonging to the potiviridae family sugarcane basically form virus which is uh, polymoviridae belonging to the polymoviridae family sugarcane yellow leaf virus sugarcane which is a uh, sugarcane yellow leaf virus you can see these these are the electro uh, electron microscopic uh, photographs of these viruses these are the uh, symptom these are the photographs of the sugarcane mosaic virus you can see that uh, poti uh, poti uh, viridae family the sugarcane mosaic virus belongs to the poti viridae family so these are the highly flexuous rods you can see in the photographs sugarcane bacilli form you can see the bullet like structures of bacilli um, bacillus like structures of the virus are seen under the electron microscopy so sugarcane yellow leaf is the spherical it is belonging to the family uh, is a uh, sorry so sugarcane uh, stick virus it is again um, sesmo virus these are showing the uh rods under the electron microscope so these are the some uh, structures of the uh, viruses of the viruses of uh, sugarcane just i am mentioning uh, since it was prepared earlier so sugarcane mosaic disease which is transmitted by aphid so there are three to four species are reported to transmit the sugarcane mosaic virus disease that is a uh, melanophis sacchari is the among these melanophis sacchari is the a uh, prominent vector of the sugarcane uh, mosaic virus so these are the electron micrographs of the sugarcane mosaic virus you can see <clears throat> another important that sugarcane stick mosaic virus these are the symptoms you can see the sticks on the leaves which is uh, caused by sugarcane stick uh, mosaic virus this is nothing but uh, belonging to the sesmo virus sugarcane fleck uh, leaf fleck disease is one of the important disease which is caused by sugarcane basilli form virus which uh, sugarcane basilli form is belonging to the family uh, polymoviridae uh, which is uh, the virions or the non enveloped basilli form uh, these are the double stranded dna uh, genome so ictv recognize these uh, two different species of the sugarcane basilli form virus that sugarcane basilli form im virus and sugarcane basilli form emo virus these two uh, species uh, are uh, known uh, recognized by ictv ictv stands for the international committee on taxonomy of viruses uh, which looks after the naming and classification of all the viruses which are reported worldwide so this organization uh, ratifying or recognizing all the uh, those distinct virus species which are reported from different crops worldwide so this organization uh, is uh, producing all the reports uh, producing all the reports and publishing that uh, information at different intervals so frequently uh, updating the uh, all the database of the viruses so this is uh, also widespread in india its, its incidence is ranging from 5 to 100% in the uh, sugarcane 
varieties. <coughs> this virus is also reported in sorghum. So yellow leaf disease uh, is one of the important disease nowadays. It is spreading in across all the genotypes of the sugarcane which is cultivated in India. So yellow leaf disease is one of the uh, this disease is a complex etiology which is known to caused by sugarcane yellow leaf virus as well as sugarcane yellow phytoplasma. So sugarcane yellow leaf virus, uh, that cholera virus, as I said, uh, it is uh, responsible for the uh, cause of the disease. Uh, as as well as the sugarcane yellow phytoplasma is also associated with the disease. This uh, was the emerging disease which was first described in Hawaii in 1989. This disease has caused a heavy losses in Brazil in 1990s. So <clears throat> almost 50% yield loss was reported in the Brazil uh, and USA also. So it is one of the most uh, first reported in India in 2000. So uh, 22, 22 years back, it was reported in India, but <clears throat> the least work uh, has uh, the maximum work is carried out at the Sugarcane Breeding Institute and Indian Institute of Sugarcane Res uh, Research, Lucknow. So, causal agent of the leaf, as I said, that virus and phytoplasma, they are associated with the disease. So, this virus is um, transmitted by aphid, Melanopsis saccharae, Ropelosipum medis, and Ropelosipum rufi abdominalis. These are the three reported uh, vectors of the uh, yellow leaf disease. These are the vector, uh, vectors of the virus which is responsible for the uh, cause of the yellow leaf disease. So these are the incidences in different states in India as far as this disease is concerned. So these are the, you can see the uh, symptoms of the white leaf, uh, grassy shoot uh, and this yellow leaf symptom. So you can see the symptoms and uh, uh, the symptoms are white, that's why the leaves and leaves are white, that's why the, the symptom, the phytoplasma is known as sugarcane white leaf. The uh, grassy growth of the plant is appeared on the field condition, uh, in the field condition, that's why the phytoplasma named as a sugarcane grassy shoot phytoplasma. So sugarcane yellow leaf, the, yeah, the sugarcane yellow leaf is uh, showing the prominent yellowing of the midrib of the sugarcane, that's what we are calling it as a sugarcane yellow leaf phytoplasma. So, uh, that sugarcane uh, yellow leaf phytoplasma, which is uh, transmitted by different uh, plant hoppers, it is Delphacid plant hoppers, and uh, leaf hopper not yet reported in India, but uh, Delph plant hopper is reported. That is a species that Saccharocidin, Saccharivora, which is uh, known as uh, is transmitting the sugarcane yellow phytoplasma. So these are the symptoms of the yellow leaf disease of sugarcane. Smaller leaves, yellowing of the mid ribs, prominent yellowing of the mid ribs, followed by the leaf lamina, uh, yellowing of the leaf lamina, and necrosis of the leaves starting from tip to the downwards, and ultimately the leaves become uh, becomes dry, and enter plants become dry. So in order to manage all the diseases, we need to follow the integrated disease management strategies, uh, starting from the uh, healthy seed program, that is a three tier seed program, which is developed by Indian Institute of Sugarcane Research, Lucknow. So uh, we know that three tier seed program, that is uh, from the breeder seed, we are producing the foundation seed, and from foundation seed to we are producing it as a commercial seed or a certified seed. So that is the that that's are the steps for the uh, production of the healthy seeds. So and uh, this helps these uh, three tier seed program, which help in the elimination of different um, seed borne infection of fungal or um, uh, fungal or bacterial or viral diseases. So this uh, can be uh, one of the strategy for management of the different diseases. Second one is the selection of plant. We need to, as we know all that, uh, we, we need to use the healthy uh, seed material as well as we need to avoid the waterlogged conditions or uh, soil which should be very suitable for the growth of the crop. 
field sanitation we need to remove the alternate or collator host uh, field sanitation is very much required to remove or to eliminate the primary source of infection from the field so use of recommended or disease resistant varieties is uh, encouraged rogi the disease or uh, we all know that uh, the disease parts which are the under field condition when the symptoms or infection which is below 5% or 10% so that uh, roging can be practiced so that we can avoid in k roging is practiced for the smut uh, we can remove the infected clumps because the smut uh, if you don't remove the smut infected veins so then uh, in, in the entire field that uh, so, uh, it will be dispersed dispersed and uh, all the field can be damaged so we need to follow the roging practice uh, in such conditions so ratuning ratuning of this is crop should be avoided because we will not get the <coughs> desired yield of the crop which is infected by fungal or bacterial or any viral infection so almost uh, of course crop diversification is one of the important steps we need to grow different crops alternatively or in in a rotation so we need to follow the crop diversification yes for diagnostic purpose serological methods molecular techniques meristem meristem tip culture you know all that meristem for serological methods we know that elisa which is followed for the di uh, diagnostics uh, of uh, all the plant viruses so enzyme elisa stands for the enzyme linked immunosorbent assay which is used for the detection of the pathogens molecular techniques we are following that uh, pcr that is uh, stands for the polymerase chain reaction reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction nested pcr generally nested pcr is used for the detection of phytoplasma why we are following the nested pcr for the detection of the phytoplasma because the phytoplasmas are available in very least uh, or low concentration in the host so we need to um, we need to follow the nested pcr uh, in order to get the uh desired results we are uh, initially we are targeting the large segment of the uh, segment for the pcr amplification and in uh, later on in the next round next round we are targeting the smaller uh, region of the uh, region of the region of the region for amplification of the plasma, that its region we are targeting so meristem tip culture yes meristem meristem we know that meristems are free from the any uh, pathogen so we are um, encouraging that meristem tip culture should be followed for the production of the virus or phytoplasma free planting material so in order to develop the uh, and the virus indexing and genetic testings are also required uh, genetic fidelity is required to have the Two, two type of the seed things which are produced uh, by the uh, any production agency or each culture production units so that's that's for that uh, genetic fidelity is required and virus of course virus indexing is to index all the viruses which are reported from india is required so, chemotherapy or the treatment of different diseases we need to go for different application of different chemicals or a set treatment we are treating the with the babesti to remove the primary source of infection from the set that is 0.2 percent the set treatment we are giving with the, by the biovesting for th 30 minutes before planting the set so these are the different chemicals which are uh, used as and when required and there is a disease conditions uh, last is the thermotherapy thermotherapy is very you know kill the set born pathogens so in the uh, uh, two types of heat therapies are uh, recommended for the management of the sugar cane diseases that is hot water treatment at 50 degrees celsius for 2 hours and moist hot air treatment that is mhat which is developed by indian institute of sugar cane research lucknow at 54 degrees celsius for 2 hours so this uh, you can see the capacity of this mhat device which is having uh, approximately uh, four quintal, approximately four quintals cane can be treated at once so this design is uh, developed by indian stock sugar cane research lab so and finally we need to apply the other biological control means 
that uh, using the pipe control agents like trichotoma and uh, when these trichotoma mixed cultures like TMC, we are putting it as a farmer manure or press mud. If we apply for uh, approximately 20, uh, 220 kg per hectare, so at the time of planting, which can improve the soil uh, and plant health, and uh, of course the nutrient uptake of the crop can be uh, improved and uh, containment of the root rot, red rot, and wilt can be reduced. So I'll skip these slides. So are you uh, are you uh, are you interested to listen this virus indexing part or genetic fidelity? Any students can listen. Hello. 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 Ah. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Am no, I audible? You are audible. You are audible. audible. Yes. Am I yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shall, we, shall we go ahead? <clears throat> yes, please. <clears throat> so, uh, virus indexing <clears throat> in uh, is very important. As I said, uh, tissue culture in, in tissue culture industry, there are the many players that tissue culture producing uh, production units are there. So, which is totally uh, regulated by the Department of Biotechnology and BCIL. Uh, BCIL. So these, uh, um, which is uh, are having the different uh, organization uh, in these uh, virus indexing as well as genetic fidelity testing. <clears throat> yes. Uh, so I will just present the background of the uh, virus indexing and genetic fidelity testing in India perspective. Uh, to promote this uh, tissue culture industry in India, uh, the Department of Biotechnology Government of India in 1999 they established a network project on the national facility for virus testing and quality control at IRI New Delhi with three research centers for virus uh, testing. Uh, later, in 2005, DBT constituted a national certification system for tissue culture raised plants in consultation with the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. So, and in 2006, the DBT was uh, notified as a certification agency for the certification of different tissue culture raised plants um, based on the, um, that, uh, based on the Gazette of India under the section 8, Seed Act, based on the Seed Act, we can say, under uh, 1996, 1966. The organization of the uh, uh, national, uh, National Certification System for Tissue Culture Raised Plant is based on, uh, this is the organization. So in India, there are two referral centers are there, uh, which are situated at IRI New Delhi. One referral center is for the virus indexing and another referral center is for the genetic fidelity testing, which is at the NRC, uh, NRC Plant Biotechnology New Delhi. Uh, so these are the two referral centers. And they, there are the five to six accredited test laboratories uh, which are actually testing the tissue culture, uh, all the, all the uh, materials which is generated from tissue culture in production uh, units, they are, the, are tested by the uh, accredited test laboratories. So these are the different laboratories that is uh, CPRI, uh, Shimla, uh, NRC for banana. Now this center is no, not continued. So GKVK Bangalore is there, um, Osandada Sugar Institute, Pune, uh, Indian Institute of Sugar Cane Research, Lucknow. Uh, these are the four centers at present. Uh, now this center uh, NRC Banana is not uh, working as ATL at present. So these are the four accredited test laboratories which are running in India for the testing of the tissue culture materials which are produced by the different tissue culture production units. So uh, why we need uh, actually the virus indexing to ensure the crop uh, biosecurity from the invasive or the deadly pathogens because uh, 
when we are importing any seedling or any um, material or seed so it may contain the viruses so we need to stop these because these uh, these are the having some biosecurity issues so we need to avoid these and for that uh, identification of these invasive, invasive pathogens we need to go for the virus index and to ensure the export promotion so if we if our stock or stuff or that uh, seed or um, planting material is free from the viruses we can uh, better ensure that it is free from the any viruses and we can uh, encourage the export similarly to understand the etiology of the disease that the first step which is uh, towards the disease management so when uh, once the our um, uh, seed is free from the any viruses or any pathogen so we will be uh, having the least uh, damage or least uh, loss due to the any diseases or uh, especially the viral diseases to ensure the production of pathogen free planting material so these are the advantages of uh, virus indexing similarly the genetic fidelity is uh, important to have the true to type of the uh, varieties or true to type of the uh, uh, plant so we need to maintain 100% uh, identity of the progeny in the genetic content so with the superior parental genotype we need to follow the genetic fidelity testing so to under and to undergo the quality checks for identification of, of types and genetically true to types progenies of the mother plant so that's why the uh, we need to have the genetic fidelity this this genetic fidelity is standard standardized for different crops uh, based on the markers uh, uh, genetic markers so uh, it is required for the uh, and all the parameters uh, in genetic fidelity all the parameters will be checked like um, uh, physiological superiority cytological uh, changes isozymes different uh, different different uh, other description morphological and uh, quality parameters quantity parameters As we uh, all know that uh, these are the just for I uh, have enlisted all the diagnostic techniques. There are two types of diagnostic techniques which are uh, based on serology as well as uh, based on the nucleic acid. So among the serologicals that uh, ELISA uh, that is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay, immunosorbent electron microscopy, uh, dot immunobinding assay, western blotting, other, uh, other these are the different tests which are uh, followed for the and diagnostics of the different pathogens uh, where as the nucleic acid based uh, diagnostic techniques which, which includes the polymerase chain reaction uh, real time pcr southern blot northern blot and microarray so these are the diagnostics uh, required for the different diseases so in detail uh, it will take long time so i have removed all the slides of these uh, diagnostic techniques so just i have uh, enlisted these techniques so you can refer the books which are uh, having uh, the details of these technique technology and techniques uh, and you can understand so in order to manage any disease so we need to follow the integrated disease management approach so until and unless we don't follow uh, the integrated disease management strategies it is very difficult to control any disease single strategy will not work because we need to follow all the steps which are required uh, for uh, management of the disease so we we need to follow the different principles of uh, principles of disease management so for that uh, starting from the cultural operation to the different uh, te uh, technological interventions we need to follow so for any management of any disease like you know, for fungal diseases bacterial diseases viral diseases so uh, i have just uh, listed out the different books which are required to go for for those students those who are preparing for the jrf they can read the plant pathology which is given by uh, gn agrivas it is uh, called as a bible of the plant pathology so it, this is one of the best uh, book uh, of plant pathology you can read for the uh, those who are preparing for the junior research fellowships icr or srf or any other examination uh, which is uh, having uh, the subject of plant pathology so uh, other text uh, the textbook of uh, fungi bacteria viruses which is given by hc dube glimpses of plant pathology this is a sub crop plants in india which is uh, given by ranga swami and mahadevan plant pathology at a glance this is a objective book which is given by uttal kumar bhattacharya so you can read all these books which are these are basically important for the jrf preparation for 
uh, and uh, as well as uh, plant pathology, which is given by GN Agrius, which is uh, also helpful for the SRF, NET, or IRI uh, uh, entrance examination or other competitive exams. So these are the different lists that modern plant pathology given by SC Dubey. Introduction to the principles of plant pathology by RS Singh. This is very uh, standard uh, book of plant pathology, which is mentioning about the principles of plant disease management. So Matthews plant virology, which is given by Roger Hull, plant diseases by RS Singh. An introduction to fungi, HC Dubey, applied plant virology, walkie. So uh, all the aspects of virology you can read from the uh, this book. This is very, uh, this is uh, out of uh, stock uh, from the market because this is very old book. So you can go from the, uh, you can take this book from the library. You may find it. So mycology, which is uh, another uh, standard book of uh, mycology that is given by Alexopoulos and Mims. So all the um, all the structures of spores, all the terminologies uh, which are used in mycology. So these are very much uh, uh, described in detail in these books. So fungicides in plant disease control, of course, it is given by Weil Nene. So the bacteria, which is given by J.P. Verma, uh, introduction to bacteria, which is uh, by uh, J. Sri Jairamo. So elements of plant virology. This this book is also uh, out of uh, market because uh, now the, uh, an introduction to bacteria or another book is by um, Mandel, Dr. K. K. Mandel. Uh, he has given, uh, he has written uh, an important book on bacteria. So you can read that book. Uh, for bacteriology aspects. Uh, elements of plant virology, basic concepts and practical. So you can refer these books. So I uh, thank you for patient hearing. Thank you, one and all. And uh, I must express my thanks to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to um, uh, uh, give lecture on the fungal diseases of the cereals as well as cash crops. Thank you very much.